Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this next video in the Army Painting Craft World series, we're going to address one of the slightly more complicated schemes, a LATOC. But it's not too hard to get that cool mottled armour effect and still get this army on the table in good time. Now let's paint. Over a black primer, I'm spraying Vallejo Model Air Steel Blue. I've thinned this 50-50 with a Life Colour Airbrush Thinner, 25 psi using a 0.4mm needle and nozzle, and that's in our Cult of Paint Evolution by Harder and Steenbeck. I've chosen this colour because it's a nice rich blue, and I'm going straight over the black so that even in the shadows we've got a little bit of a darker blue, building up to just a, a normal dark blue for our base coat. I probably experimented on this scheme more than any of the others in the Craft World series to figure out how to get that mottled armour effect. I used wire wool, uh, Brillo pads, uh, baby wipes, all the rest of it. I couldn't quite get the design that I wanted. The baby wipe thing came out too much like marbles, so veins and things. Um, the wire wool again a bit too wispy. It's great for other certain effects but it didn't work for this. So I was having a bit of a sulk cleaning the airbrush and then I noticed the cloth that I was using to clean it with uh, we call these J-cloths over here in the UK, um, but you, you tend to see them in catering situations, so you can buy big rolls of them or, or packets of them. They have these blue sort of lint-free cloths. And I realised that actually they had this, I guess, perfect uh, mesh um, to use as a stencil for us to spray through without having to do any work. And they're massive, so they work well on tanks. Um, and, you know, they're not going to damage any paintwork because they're not abrasive. So over the steel blue, as I say, I've tried this in a variety of different ways on a lot of models, models and this is the uh, the process I thought worked best overall. So I'm going to wrap it around the model, and then I'm taking a light grey. Uh, in this case, I've used Tamiya uh, IGN grey, but it really doesn't matter. Any light grey that you like through the airbrush. I tried it with white, it didn't work quite as well, so I've just gone for a light grey. And I'm just spraying this on in patches uh, over the model. And obviously the j is going to act as a mask, uh, and it's going to go through those holes uh, and show up over the blue. So I'm still being gentle, but generally because we're airbrushing, it's, it's drying fairly quick anyway. I haven't thinned this like we would normally thin, say, a Tamiya for pre-shading or anything like that. So this is thinned about one-to-one -one with Tamiya thinner, X28 thinner. Um, but you want a, a similar level of consistency um, as you did for when we were doing the blue for the base coat. And to make sure we don't get too much of that um, repeating pattern, as it were, of the holes in the cloth, we just move the cloth around so it's orientated slightly differently. Uh, as we're working our way around the model, we can cross over. And you can see we start to get these interesting patterns turning up. Certainly one of the biggest benefits to using this cloth is just being able to move it around so easily and wrap it around the model compared to a lot of the other things. And it's not fragile. You know, the, the baby wipe thing's cool for marble and stuff, but it just I didn't like it for this. It was the veins, it just didn't work. So I've been around the model. It's looking pretty uh, pretty messy right now, but it really comes together with this next step. So I've chosen one of my favourite blues at the moment. This is Vallejo Model Air Deep Sky. And the reason I'm using this is blue is a very powerful colour, and it can often completely obliterate anything underneath it. Okay, So pre-shades can often disappear if you go too heavy with your blue. But this deep sky has a lovely level of opacity, so it's still nice and translucent, nice and see-through, but still a powerful colour. And look at that. I mean, I, I, it was at this point a Latoc who I'd never fancied using, I now really wanted to do. Um, I always thought their masks were black in the helmet. Um, I'm not sure if they are. That's how I remember them, so I've given a quick grey highlight over the black there. If you think it's the same colour as the armour, just leave it on when you're painting the armour. Either way, you're going to want to mask it off so we can paint the rest of the helmet in yellow. So I'm going to use a liquid latex, uh, so a liquid mask it's called. I'm using Humbrol as the brand, but a lot of different companies do it. To apply it, I'm using a cocktail stick, and as I touch it to the model, it just sort of wicks off there and goes into the recesses. Now this is sped up slightly, this footage, but I think this whole process took me about 40 seconds to do, and you can see that I could still move the liquid mask around. But much longer than that, say a minute, it's going to be starting to dry, and then you're going to end up sort of picking patches of it off. When it is dry, it will go more or less transparent. And all you need to make sure is the paint underneath is nice and dry before you apply it. You don't have to varnish or anything. Now for the yellow, I'm going to base coat it using a nice warm orangey brown colour. So this is Mornfang Brown. And that's because we know that orange and blue work well together. 
Get enough thinness, I don't know, one or two drops of thinner to one drop of paint, something like that. Whatever makes it go through the airbrush smoothly. And then to pre-shade, I'm going to use Tamiya Flat White. Remember, it's important when we're using Tamiya paints that we use Tamiya thinners. So this is the Tamiya Acrylics, and I'm using X20A thinner. I haven't bothered with doing uh, pre-shading or clever lighting on the main armor color. I don't really see there being much point because the, when you've got that camouflage effect, it, it really can throw it out, especially on these smaller models. But I did want to put some sort of directional light uh, on the helmet. So just think about where the light's coming from and you're going to light it brightest from that direction. And then for the yellow, nice and simple, Games Workshop Contrast, Nasdrag Yellow, thinned one to one with normal airbrush thinner, through the airbrush, couple of coats, delicious. Once all that's dried, it's time to peel off the mask. I use a cocktail stick for this, just aim it into the eye cavity because we're going to be painting over that anyway, and then usually use a little bit of blue tack, but I didn't have it to hand. You can be very, very gentle, you can peel it away with your fingers, but if you use a bit of blue tack, again, you don't have to be worrying. With army painting, it's all about speed, efficiency, and not worrying about things. Now, to prepare it for the next stage, we're going to get a nice gloss coat on the model. So whatever airbrush gloss you like to use, go ahead, give it a couple of coats. We want it looking nice and shiny. And that's because when we do our oil wash in a second, we want the paint to run into the recesses and not really stay on the surfaces. Now, I'm going for, if you want a lower contrast, a uh, bit more plain effects, you just go for black or a dark blue pin wash. I think it's quite a dark scheme already, so I thought why not push it and see what we can get away with uh, for a colour as the pin wash. I've used dark rust here, uh, so it's a fast drying oil paint and I've thinned it down with artist grade low odour thinners. I know orange, as I've said already, works nicely with the blue, so it's worth a try. The nice thing with the oil paints is if I don't like it when it's dried, it's very easy for me to remove. I can just load some thinner up on my brush, so just the pure Sansador on my brush or whatever spirits you're using, and you can gently wipe it away. You're not going to do any damage to anything, uh, it's just a bit of time that it'll take. So I'm just working my way around all of those recesses on the model, and just touching the wash, touching the brush against it, and the wash will just wick off the brush into those recesses. Now, although it's fast drying, I often, when I'm doing these things, just leave it overnight to dry. Uh, but typically, leave about an hour, get a hairdryer on it, high heat, gentle power, and it will dry off, no problem for you. And we've got a lot of different finishes on the model, particularly that really bright gloss, which is definitely not the finish we want to finish the model with. Um, so I'm giving it a coat of ultra matte varnish. When I use ultra matte, I make sure I build it up um, because it's very, very powerful. Um, so give it one coat, let it dry before you add another one. Now an optional stage, but something I really like to do, as I'm sure you can tell if you've watched the rest of this series, is this sort of tippy-tappy chipping, uh, kind of edge highlighting, battle damage in one. And all I've done is added a little white into the steel blue, uh, not steel blue, sorry, the deep sky, so the highlight blue colour that we used. Not only does this lighten the blue, um, it also thickens it up. I used uh, model colour white, which is obviously very thick, and just working my way around all of the edges, Tip it up in here and there, and you can just see the extra definition that's brought in to the armor. And I love how that orange has uh, has worked on there. Might not be for you, so like I say, use black or blue or something if you'd rather. Now it's just time for detailing. Uh, for the gems, we're going to go red. Um, so I'm base coating it with Games Workshop Mephiston red. And if we think of the gems as an oval, we're going to paint the red in a sort of crescent, covering about 80% of it. Then we'll take an orange, in this case Fire Dragon Bright. And we do a very thin crescent in the opposite corner, as it were, corner, as you know what I mean, opposite end, side, whatever, to the uh, where we've left a little bit of black. Now, I've used a little bit of contrast paint red there um, just to pump the colour up a little, a bit more saturated. Um, but you could either mix that into your base red, apply it like I have. If you do, you're going to need to reapply the little orange highlight. Um, or you just pick a, a more saturated red to begin with. And then where you've left that little bit of black, we pop a white dot in there. So now we've got a nice reflection dot. With my gems, I also like to put a bit of gloss varnish on them at the end. I think it looks nice in the hand and on the table. You see, I'm just reapplying that edge there. And for the eye lenses, although I am painting them blue in this video, it's exactly the same process to paint them red. Uh, so we'd use the same colors. So we'd base coat it with the red. For our highlight, just follow the shape of the lenses. So these are sort of a triangle. So we're just going to take our, our orange, as it were, our, our highlight orange colour, and we'll just trace it along, follow the edge of the eye lens. 
and I've left this one in real time just because some people say oh it takes ages doing these kind of things well you've got the armor painted pretty quickly so having a bit of extra time you know if it's one evening in a hobby session you know half an hour comfortably you could go around your squad of guardians and do the eye lenses and the gems you know it's a nice sort of self-contained task then again just a little white reflection dot up in the corner I really do like the uh, the yellow, the Nasdreg yellow. I think I'm going to be using that on a few more projects. For the Wraithbone weapons, uh, I've just chosen to use uh, Xandri Dust by Games Workshop. Uh, I've given it a couple of coats as the base coat um, to get to go over the black. I think it took three or four to get a solid coat. And then I'm making up an oil wash. This time I've just used a brown. I think this is Shadow Brown by Absalom 502, but Burnt Umber any dark brown will work great. We're just going to wash that straight over. And then when it's dry, we'll do a little bit of tippy-tappy chipping um, with a lighter colour. So you could use Zandri dust, but just maybe add a, a drop of white in there. It's exactly the same as we did on the yellow helmet, for instance. And here you can see all together, I've said this in previous videos, the scheme comes together incredibly quickly once you've got the armour done. I love how this looks. This Eldar series has been a complete disaster for trying to keep me on track with personal projects. Um, I never fancied doing a Latoc, ever. Um, like they were cool to look at and all the rest of it. But I mean, I think it's a really cool scheme. Um, and as I say, the joy of that, that J cloth is you could translate that to a tank really nice and simple, um, you know, because they're, they're such big uh, cloths to work with. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the Craft World series. I think we're nearly done. We've got a couple more coming up uh, to, to round it out. We've got an Army Painting Plus video over on Patreon as well where we talk about applying the schemes onto the tanks and covering a few more things that you're going to come across when you're painting an Eldar army. So thank you ever so much for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you try the scheme out, make sure to let us know. I'd love to see it across a larger project. If you want to support us, then like, comment and subscribe and consider checking out the Patreon as well for an additional video every week, slightly more in depth and often on our personal projects or display pieces. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.